What is up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? It's your boy Goblin, and today we're coming in with a video talking about poverty drugs. I hope you guys enjoy this one. Drop a like if you do. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And before we dive into that, we need to talk about my parlay this week because listen, Last week, week before, I have not really been winning anything. So this week, I'm sending it. Because if there's one thing I'm sure of, it's that betting against the Bears is a W. So we're just going all in on that. The Chargers better win. I'm going to be at the game this Sunday. So we'll see how it plays out, ladies and gentlemen. But... If you guys want to get in on the action with me, all you have to do is head over to my bookie and sign up using code GOBLIN to claim up to 200 bucks as your first time deposit bonus. Just head over to my bookie and sign up with code GOBLIN and you get in on all the action. The best odds, the craziest parlays, you can do it all with my bookie. Big thanks to them and without further ado, let's dive right into it. So listen. Before we go any further into this, I think we need to address the definition of a poverty drug. What is a poverty drug, okay? Poverty drug is a term that my friends and I have used since high school, since our adolescence, and a poverty drug is just a drug for poor people, a drug for people with nothing going on in their lives, and those two things necessarily don't go hand in hand, right? Sometimes they do, and when these drugs are involved, usually they do go hand in hand. For example, one time me and my friends, we tried to snort some melatonin when we were in rehab. That's a poverty drug. Going to the store and stealing DXM because you have no money to buy anything else. Poverty drug, okay? Smoking meth while you are unemployed, living in a trailer, tweaking out of your mind. Poverty drug, okay? This is all about which drugs are poverty drugs. So let's start this off with the first honorable mention on this list. And of course, what I view as one of the top poverty drugs, and this is DXM, okay? Now listen, let's talk about it. DXM is a drug that is only done out of desperation, okay? Nobody does DXM, like, willingly. Nobody, like, if you have infinite money and access to whatever drug you want, you're not gonna go grab a bottle of Del Sim and down that shit. DXM, when I think of my experiences with it, I think of the struggle. I think of being down bad. And I think of one instance in particular that solidifies this as a poverty drug in my head. You see... There was one time where me and my homies back in high school, we were theory crafting. We did a whole lot of DXM. We were popping triple C's every other day. And we thought in our heads, what if there was a way that you could snort it? And it would probably hit faster and harder. So we're sitting there in our brains cooking up because we had no resources, okay? This is like when you spawn into Minecraft. That's the situation we were in. We didn't even have any wood yet, okay? Absolutely nothing but these boxes of triple C's that we stole from Walgreens. So we're sitting there and we're like, yo. We could crush these up and get way more bang for your buck. Like instead of having to pop, you know, eight or nine of these shits, which by the way... Triple C's are so not fun to abuse. Like, do not do this. But what if we, instead of popping eight or nine of these, we only got to snort two or three? Instantly, we were all sold. In theory, this was the smartest idea our stupid little DXM brains had ever had at this point. So we got to work, bro. We're trying to crush up this Triple C. And we realized very quickly that the coating on the outside was making it extremely difficult. And we ended up doing some struggle shit. You see, we put the Triple C in a paper towel. And then we stepped on the paper towel. We just stomped it. We picked that shit up and then we realized very quickly that now all of the goop that we have just crushed up, you know, the red coating, the little goop on the inside is now just stuck in the paper towel. I mean, goop is probably the wrong word. It was, it was like powder in there. There's nothing moist in, in a triple C. But now we had a serious problem. Now we had an issue. We're looking down and we're like, boys, this A... Hey, Shake it the fuck out. Hey, we need our money's worth on this. We didn't spend a penny on this, but this triple C is worth money to us. All right, shake it out of the paper towel. So we're sitting there trying to shake it out of the paper towel. And I kid you not, we couldn't get it out. Like we got a decent little bit of it off the paper towel, but there was a large amount of it stuck in there. So what did we do? Motherfucker, we put our noses straight up to the paper towel and just inhaled. Just just straight inhaled the, the micro papers off the paper towel along with the triple C. And the, you know, 
this might have been the most worthless thing I've ever done because A, I didn't feel anything. And none of us felt anything, okay? I was with two other homies. None of us felt anything, okay? B, we were getting little chunks of the coating as we're trying to snort off the paper towel, and those were not dissolving very easily in our noses. So I'm sitting here, and I've got these little triple C fragments lodged into my fucking nose. I'm not feeling good whatsoever. DXM is a poverty drug. Triple C's are a poverty drug. I, to this day, don't know any grown adults that are still abusing this shit. This is solely a drug abused by either A, absolute gone-off-their-rocker tweakers, like just too far gone to save, or teenagers. DXM is the textbook definition of a poverty drug, ladies and gentlemen. That was the first one on the list, but we're not done, okay? We're moving on to the next poverty drug, you know? Listen, drum roll, please, all right? Someone cook it up. Xanax is a very serious poverty drug, okay? Now, I know this is going to irritate some people. Bar tarts have rage within them. So when they hear this, immediately they're going to flock to the comments and unleash that inner Xanax rage upon my comment section. And that's okay, because listen, if you want to find the most unemployed people the fastest way possible... The best way to do it is not going to an unemployment center or going on Reddit. The best way to do it is just take a Xan, like one little ladder, tie a little fucking string around it, and just go to any food joint, you know? For example, go to, like, like McDonald's, you know? Bar tarts love McDonald's because they can spend their last $5 on enough McChickens to last them for, like, at least two days, you know? So go to a McDonald's tie a little string around a bar and just hang it out the window of your car and do a couple laps. And I swear to God, you will have a horde of unemployed people. I kid you not. Listen, none of my friends who were bar tards when they were younger and now ever did very much with their time. Me, during my own Xanax phases, I never did very much with my time. And Xanax is one of those drugs that'll have you picking the crumbs out of the carpet, you know? I don't do that with very many substances. A lot of things, you know, I can control myself enough to wait for the re-up. But Xanax is one where universally everyone has a carpet crumb picking experience off that shit. It is a universal feat. If you are a bar tard and you don't have a carpet crumb picking experience how does it feel to have privilege does it feel good because I didn't have that luxury and the worst part about Xanax is that Xanax users, you know, the legendary bar tards, they stop giving a shit very quickly. When they first start out, 99% of them are like, okay, I only want to get the script stuff. You know, my homie's grandma or mom has a script. I'll just get off my homie. Then it quickly devolves into, okay, well, the plug has them for $2 a pop. And, you know, I'm not sure how much Alprazolam's really in them, but they still hit good. And then it deteriorates into, okay, I actually prefer the fentanyl in my Xans, okay? Listen, Xanax is a drug that will, if your life is on an upward trajectory, you can pop a couple of these bad boys and hit a U-turn super fast. Hit a quick little 180. Every Xanax user that I know is poor. I don't know one successful person that takes Xanax. And if that offends you, if that comment offends you, you need to take a serious look at how many Xans you're taking. You need to reconsider, bro. Listen, all the rich bartars graduated to drink and lean, my boy, okay? You need to take a real look at yourself, okay? A real Consider some things, okay? Xanax is one of the worst drugs that you can abuse. The true definition of a poverty drug. If I was the manager of a business and a bartard and a fucking meth head walked into the business, I would hire the meth head 10 times out of 10 over the bartard every single time without fail. And you know what? That brings me into our next poverty drug, ladies and gentlemen, which is meth. Now listen, I used to live in a little town called Springfield, Illinois. For those of you guys who know anything about the state of Illinois, you know that Springfield very well might be the tweaker headquarters of the Midwest. Like, I, I really mean it. The amount of casual meth heads just wandering around Springfield is absolutely ludicrous. This is a town where there was nothing to do anywhere. The best activity was going to Walmart. And trust me, 
People went to Walmart in this bitch. My neighbors at my old house that I lived in would smoke meth in this little tool shed in the backyard and leave the door open all hours of the day and night. They would literally sit in there for 24 hours straight. And I know this because while they were smoking meth, I was inside doing coke and peering out my windows looking for the ops that didn't exist. So I saw them out there very, very often. And let me tell you, Every meth head that I bumped into in this town was in shambles, okay? They're driving the worst condition vehicles you've ever seen, okay? They're geeked out of their minds, borderline incoherent. Sometimes they hear things that aren't really happening. They start mumbling and, and you know, just ranting about random things that don't make any sense. The other day I went to GameStop and there was a tweaker in there talking to the two cashiers about astronauts dying. Why the fuck would you think that the GameStop cashier cares about astronauts dying? Meth. That's why you would think that. The tweaker drug. The ultimate tweaker drug. Listen, I know a few people from back in the day that graduated to meth. A lot of the kids who liked the cheap uppers back then. You know, in particular, some of the people who popped a lot of Adderall in my younger days have graduated to meth. And looking at these people, looking at my friends who have graduated to that, and it's not very many, granted, it wasn't a very popular thing where I grew up at, but looking at people who, who you know, graduated to meth... It just tears their fucking lives apart, bro. Because they think that they're so efficient. Meth heads think that they're getting so much shit done. And in reality, they spent the past 36 hours trying to rearrange the wires in their ring camera so they could communicate with Jesus. Listen, meth is a bad one, ladies and gentlemen, okay? I, you know, both living up north in Illinois, I knew a few people that did it. And then once I moved to Springfield and I met a bunch of people from there and also from St. Louis, hey, they some real geekers and not in the good way. Cocaine is like the, the sophisticated upper, you know? It's, it's terrible for you. They're both awful, but cocaine is like the sophisticated one, you know? Cocaine, it's like, it's like a lot of people do it very taboo way. You would never know they do it. If someone smokes meth, you know they do it because eight of their teeth are missing and the other ones that are still there are rotten. Their face is very gaunt. Their eyes are sunk in. They look like the people from the lung cancer commercials that are talking through that tube in their neck, except they don't smoke cigarettes. They just smoke a little bit of meth on the weekends. I also want to give an honorable shout out to crack cocaine because at first I was going to put that on this list, but I thought a little more about it and I realized crack is just purified coke. And the people that do that shit, although yes, you know, it is a poverty drug, people give it all up for that, is purified cocaine. Like on paper as a concept, I cannot refer to that as a poverty drug. It's close. But I think this list is a little more of a poverty drug. You know, maybe there are a couple sophisticated crack smokers out there. Where are they? I think I might be one of the few. If you're a sophisticated crack smoker, let me know in the comments below. But hey, listen, it's time to go get high. I love you guys. Thank you for watching the video. Drop a like. Shout out my bookie. Use code GOBLIN. What are you waiting for? Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, the whole shebang. Doses.